So hello everyone. Welcome to Andy's Recycling webinar. My name is Rachel. With us today, we have John Ming, Director of FAE for North America. He will talk about RISC-V vector extension and the first commercial RISC-V vector processor IP, NX27B. So John, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Hi, my name is John Min. Um, I am the Director of Field Application Engineering for North America. I'm very excited to introduce and go into a little more detail our vector extensions and um, our new processor, NX27V. Um, so let's, uh, let's go in. Um, what we'll talk about today is we'll go do a quick ANDIS overview, a couple of slides. We'll give you an overview of RISC-V uh, and RISC-V vectors, extensions specifically. I'll introduce the um, ANDIS vector processing unit microarchitecture. And then follow up by our new processor, Andy's NX27V vector processor that implements the, uh, our VPU. We'll talk briefly about development tools, optimized performance, and we'll end up with the summary and question and answers. So at a glance, who we are, we're a pure play CPU IP company. Uh, we're a funding member, a premier member of RISC-V International. We're established public company um, in Taiwan, and we contribute to the open source and running task groups of risk Five International. Company is 15 years old. We have 200, more than 200 licenses worldwide. And as most IP companies, majority, majority of our employees are engineers, R&D engineers. We, we've shipped more than 5 billion chips um, including last year, uh, 1 billion chips in last year. And we have 17,000 plus and decide software development tool installations. We are an international company with offices, headquarters in Taiwan and offices all over the world. Um, I work at the USA office. So just quick introduction to our architecture and maybe a little bit of terminology. We have processors that, that are N and D series. These denote some of the features. N series is standard controller. D series includes our DSP extensions or P extensions. Uh, we have N22, which is a very leading microcontroller PPA, and then 25 series, N25, uh, D25, and then NX. X denotes 60 for the processors. And then we've, we've followed that on with the A series. A series controllers support virtual memory with the memory management unit, so they can run rich feature, rich operating systems like Linux. So we have A25, that's 32 bits, AX25, and then the vector variant, AX27, and then AX45, our superscalar multi-core processor that was introduced recently. Lastly, we have the V series. Uh, these are the series that include uh, the vector instruction set and extension such as NX27V or NX45V processors. We, we marry these along with a domain-specific architecture, uh, such as an Andes custom extension that can add custom instructions or instructions specifically designed to accelerate your algorithm or data handling. We could actually implement higher bandwidth uh, data interfaces through our custom extensions as well. All right, so where are all these uh, V5 uh, being used? Um, it's, it's really being used every, everywhere from the smallest microcontrollers to very high-end data centers, such as ADAS, IoT, blockchain processing, in FPGA, general purpose microcontrollers, multimedia security, and then on the high-end side, data center, AI accelerators, and storage, enterprise and consumer storage, and 5G macro and small cells. Our customers are implementing processors, or SOCs, they incorporate one to more than 1,000 cores on single SOC in a variety of processes from 40 nanometers to seven nanometers, and many of them um, in AI space. So, Let's talk about 
the uh, RISC V and RISC V vectors. So the RISC uh, vector processing starts from Cray machine, where the, if there were Cray, Cray's were first supercomputers to successfully implement a vector processor design in 1975. These machines were very big. Um, they were they were seven feet, more than almost two meters tall, and they took up a lot of space. And basically, a vector processor is is a processor that implements improves high performance of math operations on a large data set. Things like uh, weather, global weather analysis and prediction, or today, um, sort of uh, the virus or medical applications, where you, you perform the same operation on large data set of data. So just as a reference, in 1975. Cray 1 was a 64 bit vector processor running at 80 megahertz. And this is very high speed because I remember buying my first computer in 1985 and there was IBM PC running at 4.77 megahertz. So this was a big high performance engine. So we take this concept, single operation on large data sets, and with RISC 5 International uh, implemented a vector extension. This five processor architecture came out, started in Berkeley to be designed as a compact, modular, and extensive architecture. Um, RISC V International was formed, and it used to be RISC V Foundation, to govern or mold its growth and limit fragmentation. Today, it includes over 500 members, including industry and research institutes and universities. And last, the RISC V Summit in December. 2019 had over 1,000 plus attendees. It was a big event. So RISC V extension specifically, it's being defined in RISC V International Task Group. Uh, it, it, it includes vector instruction set with scalable vector registers, including two to four X data expansion and arithmetic. So vector extensions can be increased uh, to, to increase precision. These include over 300 vector instructions covering loads and stores, integers, fixed point, and floating point operations. So let's quickly remind ourselves what a vector processing is versus what Cindy might do. So let's assume we have two engines, vector processor and a SIMD engine, and they have the same computational length. And we're gonna do two operations. We'll do a SIMD add followed by SIMD multiply, and we're gonna do four, eight plus eight in single cycle, and also do followed by four, eight times eight in another cycle. And then we'll use the same calculation as vector engine. So if you look at the table, in the first cycle, we issue the first add, second cycle, we issue the second add, third cycle, and fourth cycle. And only in fifth cycle, after the uh, fourth add, is issued that could start a multiply. In a vector engine, what we can do is we could start the add operation. It's a vector operation. The vector processor will run through these four instructions. So we can issue a next instruction right away in next cycle. So that saves us three cycles for the first two instructions. And follow on, it could save six cycles for the third instruction. So one advantage is if there's a we could execute a lot more instructions or issue a lot more instructions um, and follow on instructions start faster. One of the downsides is there's some setup overheads to set up the vector engine. There's a hardware cost, vector registers, all the control logic and and, and programming sophistication. But when you use the vector processing, when you have large array of data, you need to calculate and manipulate. And we'll talk about the acceleration it can achieve. So let's talk about registers. The scale of vector registers. The, um, our vector processing unit has a 32 vector registers, each with the vector length of bits, um, depending on the hardware configuration. Data format wise, a standard element width, SCW, could be eight bits, all the way up to 1,000 bits. 
and data types are they could be integer types, 1632, 64 bits, or floating point types, FP16, FP32, and FP64. And for example, if the vector length is 512, each vector registers and contains 16 elements when element width is 32, at the integer of floating point. 32 elements is and the element width is 16. And then 64 elements if element uh, width is 8. So the vector registers are very flexible. And we, we support length multiplier. So basically, we, we could combine vector registers, make it as wide as uh, we need to contain more elements. And it could be set to 1, 2, 4, or 8 at runtime by the software. So this is a software configurable uh, feature. So one, one example, if a vector length is 512 and L length multiplier is 8, V0, register vector register 0, will actually represent 8 registers, V0 to V7, or effectively, it will be 4,000-bit register with 128 FP32 data. So this is flexible at runtime by software. So where are, what are the application of vector processors? Mainly key computational kernels, matrix multiply, FFT sorting, that are so fundamental to a lot of processing, like cryptography, RSA, DES, uh, shock calculations, deep machine learning, AR, VR, and multimedia processing, graphics, image, or video. Networking, because the vector registers can be very wide, it, it could accelerate mem copy and mem set. And then scientific computing, the way it started, it's modeling analysis of large set of data. So let's talk about, the, those are the concepts. Let's talk about how we, we're gonna start architecting this vector processing unit. Our vector processing unit, it supports the latest RISC-V vector spec, B spec. And data format wise, we support integer and floating point from 8 to 64 bits, including um, the extensions with DB created and this extended, bfloat16 and in4 that are used in um, RF AI applications. The, um, along with this, vector length and SIMD width, calculation width, could be 128 bits, 256 bits, or 512. Um, and vector instructions to know is vector compute instructions, they start after being retired. Basically, once you, once you issue a vector instruction, it'll run to completion. See so if they're chainable and fully pipeline. We'll talk about chaining in a couple of slides. And multiple functional units, floating point unit, integer unit, and other calculation units can operate independently, out of order if needed. So basically, it's fully, um, Scoreboarded chaining forwarding pipeline. And lastly, we, we have a lot of independent way to get data in and out of the core, including wide vector loads and stores. If, if you're looking for even higher performance, you can create a streaming load and store interface through our custom extension. So let's talk about chaining example. So when L merges up to one, um, we calculate, we do a vector floating convert, and we're going to do a floating point add. Um, it takes, the pipeline's two cycles, it takes two cycles. In very third cycle, the data is forwarded um, to the, uh, the next instruction, so the next instruction can be issued. When LMAR is two, again, we could issue the second instruction right after the next cycle, like the floating convert, um, the next instruction gets executed, or next element gets executed, along with the, uh, the immediate intermediate values that pass forward to the next instruction, back to floating point add, therefore is being able to issue and execute instructions more quickly. And once it's, uh, if we do length multiplier eight, obviously we could do eight instructions at the same time. We could keep a fully pipeline fully busy. So what else can we do? 
we could do a vector masking example as well. So sometimes when we do an array mask, we, we might filter out certain values, and that's exactly what it does. So a, uh, the, vector, the, the vector mask is a V0 at the most LSB of V0, and we could say this element needs to be calculated, or we could filter out, don't update this, this value. So the uh, vector mask is fully supported. And we're going to take this concept and talk about a processor that implements these concepts and vector processing units, which is Andy's NX27B vector processor. Um, the, the, the NX27B builds upon our Ambisat V5 architecture. It supports RV64, GCN, and P extension, which is DSP operations, and other Andistar V5 extensions. And key-wise, it also supports this five vector extension. It, that's the main star of this processor. This is a five-stage pipeline, single is in order scalar core, with the branch prediction being optional. And IIB cache subsystem could be from eight kilobytes to 64 kilobytes. And most importantly, we will support hardware online loads and stores. And they can be protected either with parity or ECC protection. Instruction and data caches support prefetching to increase performance. The caches could have up to 16 outstanding data accesses. And we have wide data paths to feed the VPU. There's, we have cache, non cache to risk five loads and stores. And again, we could implement a streaming port through ACE mechanism, both in stores. So this is a pipeline of the processor. We talked about out on the top, there are five stages, a basic scalar processor. And once the instruction vector register, vector instructions reach the instruction execution unit, it gets dispatched to our vector instruction queue and our vector processor takes over and executes those instructions to completion, whether it be scalar FPU operations or vector integer and FPU operations. <clears throat> so this is kind of speed up we're seeing today. So the for most applications, we're seeing about 20 times acceleration from a compiled C code versus um, hand-optimized assembly uh, vector code. F32, 14.32 bas basic math function, accelerates about 19 times. A lot of AI CNN functions, RGB deathwise pointwise CNN functions, they get accelerated about 18 to 20 times, 21 times. Um, same thing goes with uh, floating point uh, filter functions. Q7 filtering functions get accelerated 40 times. And as a, um, as a the highlight, 32-bit um, uh, matrix multiplication um, can be accelerated up to about almost 60 times. So this is a big, big gain, um, and it's designed to be uh, designed to operate on the array of vector data. So here's the floor plan um, of the NX27B processor uh, in seven nanometer technology. Um, it, it'll, it'll, implement, it'll achieve uh, gigahertz in worst case. And we're expecting this entire macro, including cache RAMs, to be about 0 0.3 square millimeters. So there, there's could be slight variation depending on how you implement, but this implements 16 kilobyte I cache and 32 kilobyte D cache. So how do we stack up against what's uh, competing solutions on the market today? So our Andy's NX27B, which is the first uh, processor and first RISC-V processor to implement the vector extensions. And we compete against the Cortex A-series Neon, which is a popular SIMD engine, and then upcoming uh, vector, ex vector instructions extension from the from ARM. Vector registers, 
uh, we, we have 32 registers. Leon has 32 registers. Um, Helium has eight registers. Vector lengthwise, we're configurable up to 512 bits. The neon is fixed at 128 bits. Helium is fixed at 120 bits. So theoretically, just off the bat, we could have four times the computation, um, computational bandwidth. Um, same thing with SIMD width. They could be 512 bits per cycle. Um, the uh, computing solutions are at 120 bits or 64 bits. And we have um, out we support length multiplier functions. Um, other architectures do not. We support chaining to uh, issue instructions quicker. Um, and uh, Neon, that does not. is a SIMD engine, as we saw. And Helium does support chaining. So we're flexible. Um, we have a high performance. And we could be dialed to fit your needs. So how do we use all these? CPU, we're a CPU processor, so we need software. So we have development tools. We have a standard software development tools in Andy site, IDE, which includes Andy Sim, which is our near cycle accurate simulator, it includes compiler, assembler, debugger, um, ICE, and some of the computational libraries. Advanced tools wise, there's AI advanced compiler support through LIVM. And we have a special tool called Andy's Clarity. It's a pipeline visualizer and analyzer tool. So you can show you the pipeline view of the instructions and functional units as instructions get executed, shows the resources, and most importantly, shows the stall bubbles uh, if there are con stall conditions for data dependencies. So this slide shows vector execution. And what we could see in the red box is we could see four instructions in flight at the same time. So pipeline's busy. There's a floating point operation. So there's a, a four cycle pipeline. Um, and you could see that there's a bubble. The second, there's one bubble at the green box um, because the instructions are two cycle latency. So this is a clarity tool, shows a pipeline, why the bubbles are happening, so that you can really go in and tune the performance uh, to maximize the hardware and software. So in summary, uh, RISC-V vectors, it opens the door for RISC-V to further exceed any other ISAs on the market. NX27 feed vector processor, which is the first implementation of RISC-V vectors, is the world's first commercial processor available today. It's setting standards for high performance, described with innovative design, a flexible vector processing unit, configuration to enable wide range of applications. Tune the hardware to your application. Uh, we have an Andy's Clarity tool to really optimize the performance and software. And Andy's technology, we continue to expand vector product and CPU product family uh, based on Andy's PPU microarchitecture. So um, this is the end. It, 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 if anyone has questions, I will. Uh, I can answer them. Okay. Thank you, John. So now we're opening the floor yeah. to questions. Uh, if you have any questions for our speaker, please leave your questions in the chat box. Also, today's webinar will be available on demand on ANDA's website and YouTube channel. The slides will also be available for download on the website. Uh, so right now, if you have any questions for John, please leave your questions in the chat box. Okay. Uh, first, we got a couple questions here. Uh, the first one is, when will NX27B be available? Um. Our NX27B is already being used by early customers, and and we, we, we're engaged with a couple of early adopters. For general availability, uh, it'll be available in early Q4 this year. Okay, uh, moving on to the second question we got. Uh, does NX27B support TCM or local memory? Well, for the uh, for vector units specifically, um, 
the streaming port can serve as a local memory. Uh, in addition, NX27B, a streaming port provides higher bandwidth to bring memory contents to vector registers. So with custom vector load and store instructions, which can be length and element with a wire to external memory and send out those custom information directly to smart memory. So these eight instructions can do much more function than simply be just being reading and writing. So in other words, a streaming port acts as an intelligent local memory. Okay. Uh, the next question is, is SW compatible among RISC V vector processors with different VLAN? Yes. RISC V vector defines a, a set of special instructions and guidelines to write VLAN agnostic programs. So basically, a co compatible write, being able to write compatible software independent of VLAN. Okay. Uh, one more question. Does Andes has planned to support a vector extension on cores with higher performance? Yes. So basically, we, we, will, we will continue to innovate the processors, um, both in the vector processor the, and also scalar processors. Right now, the 27B is the first processor. We could expect the 45 series, super, which is a super scalar processor, to be enabled with the vector processing unit as well. Okay, uh, we've got a couple more questions here. Does RISC V vector extension spec define the maximum bits of B length? Um, there's no maximum limitation of B length, and however, it, it it will depend on hardware implementation. So specification does not limit length, but the implementation may. Um, the VLAN is a good physical design choice. And right now we support 5.12. If you need something longer, let us know. Um, we're always taking customer input. Okay, uh, this one should be our last question today. Uh, what kinds of AI compiler will be connected to LLVM compiler? Please give an example. Well, there are two open source AI compilers, TVM and Glow. Um, TVM is heavily used by Amazon and Glow is heavily used by Facebook. In addition to data centers, um, these can also be used for edge computing as well. Okay, uh, since there are no more questions here, let's wrap up here. Thank you, John, and thank you all for joining us today. Today's recording yeah, is back to be available on Andis website. Uh, the info of upcoming webinars will be announced on Andis website soon, so stay tuned. Thank you, John, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you everyone. Bye. Bye.